In this video, I'm gonna show you how I sew this cloth pad start to finish. This is a beginner video, so I'll be going through the steps in quite a bit of detail. And this is just how I like to sew cloth pads. There are other methods and other ways to sew cloth pads. If you're an absolute beginner, especially if you're a beginner in sewing, I would recommend choosing a pattern that has straight lines only, like this pattern, or straight lines and slight curves like this pattern. Tighter curves or fancier shapes are a little bit trickier to sew. I'll leave some links in the description for where you can find patterns and other useful information to help you get started with sewing cloth pads. I start by preparing three pattern pieces. One is for the topper and backer sewing line, one is for the core cutting line, and one is for the core top stitching. The fabric I'm using for my topper is an athletic wicking jersey mesh fabric. It's a knit fabric and it stretches a little bit. It's a little bit thin. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend using quilting cotton as your topper fabric. It'll be much easier to handle and sew. You need to figure out which is the right side or the pretty side of your fabric. So if it's got a print on it, then the print shows up nicely on the right side and the wrong side is the opposite side of the fabric. And you're also gonna to need to figure out what the length of your fabric is. So the length of the fabric is usually the sturdiest part of your fabric. If you're buying fabric by the yard, you're gonna find these little holes or some kind of different type of fabric along the length of the fabric, and that's called the selvage. So this will help you identify the length of your fabric. Lay your fabric down flat on the table, wrong side facing up, and place the pattern piece with this line along the length of the fabric. Make sure to leave about a centimeter or three-eighths of an inch or so of excess fabric all the way around the pattern piece. And trace all the way around using a washable marker that'll come off in the wash or a vanishing marker that evaporates over time. In addition to tracing all the way around your pattern, you're also going to make two marks, one here and one here. Once you finish tracing out your pattern and making these two marks, cut all the way around. Be sure not to cut on the line. This is the sewing line and we need extra fabric all the way around the pattern. So leave about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch all the way around your pattern piece and it doesn't have to be precise. Now you're going to flip the fabric so that the right side is facing up and we're going to center the core top stitching guide onto the right side of the fabric. Now, since I can see through this fabric, it's very easy for me to center it. But let's say you can't see the sewing line through the fabric. So what you would do is place one pin over here. That's what these marks were for. and another pin on the other side over here. And then we can see the pins from the right side of the fabric. And the place where the pins pierce the fabric help us align the core top stitching guide. So we wanna align the core top stitching guide using these two points. You can use a ruler to help you see the center line and you wanna place the core top stitching guide at an even distance away from each of these pins. So you want this distance to be equal to this distance and just remove the ruler if you're using it and trace around the pattern piece. I like to sew the core to the topper from the topper side using this line because that way the top stitching line always comes out centered even if the core shifts a little bit. And now it's time to use our core cutting line pattern piece in order to cut out our core. So I'm using just one layer of Zorb 3D Dimple for the core. And I am again aligning the length of the pattern with the length of the fabric. So in case of the core, you cut along the line and you don't add any seam allowance. Now I place the topper with the wrong side facing up and I place the core on top of it and align it so that it's centered compared to the stitching line. And I place a few pins so that it doesn't shift. Now I flip it over because I'm gonna be sewing the core to the topper from the topper side. I place pins all the way around and you can feel through the fabric to make sure that the core hasn't shifted. 
Now that we've pinned the core to the topper from the topper side, we can remove the pins that we put on the core side so that they won't get in the way as we're sewing. For a top stitch, I like to adjust my stitch length to the three setting on my machine. And for all of my cloth pad sewing, I like to set the needle to stop in the down position. And I'm using an open toed foot, which makes it much easier for me to see the line that we're gonna sew along. So I like to start somewhere along a straight line, not anywhere near a tight curve or a corner. And especially if you're a beginner, go really slowly and leisurely. Don't rush it. Once you're experienced enough and if you feel confident enough, you'll speed up naturally, but it's better to start slow and go fast when you're comfortable than go fast and lose control of your stitching. I didn't reinforce my stitching. I didn't do a back stitch and forward, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So as you can see, I'm lifting the presser foot and putting it back down after adjusting the fabric whenever I need to. So sometimes it can be because the needle sort of wandered a little bit off the line. And sometimes it can be because I'm nearing a curve and it was hard for me to turn the fabric without lifting the presser foot. And also, in order to pivot on a turn, I stitch all the way to the turn, lift the presser foot, turn my fabric, and then continue stitching. So take it slow and make sure that you still have control as you're stitching and make sure that the needle is following the line that you're sewing along. So before I sew all the way back to the point where I started, I like to stop with the needle in the down position so I don't lose my place in my stitching. And I pull the bobbin thread or the, the thread at the back. And what this does is it pulls the top thread to the back. So you can see that the top thread is pink and it's being pulled to the back. And then either using my fingers or using a pin, I pull that thread all the way to the back so that my top stitching is completely smooth without any back stitching. And then I can just tie these threads three times at the back and trim them off and then the stitch is secure. And then I can go back and continue my top stitching. So I'm nearing a corner here. I sew all the way to the corner. Then with the needle in the down position, I lift the presser foot, turn the fabric around and put the presser foot back down. And if I see that I didn't sew far enough, I just lift the presser foot back, turn the fabric back to the way it was, add another stitch or two and pivot again. You can see here that the fabric is starting to crumple. So I lift the presser foot, adjust the fabric and keep going once it's smooth again. You can also try the decorative stitches of your machine. I do that sometimes too, but I most often just do a straight stitch for my top stitching. Now I'm nearing the beginning of my stitch. So I make sure that the end of the stitch is going to match perfectly with the beginning of the stitch. And then I lift the needle and pull the fabric out and snip the threads and do the same thing I did before. Pull at the bobbin thread, and then using a pin, I pull the top thread to the back side and then tie them together three times. And you get perfectly neat top stitching. Now you can see that even though I pinned it in place, the core shifted a little bit. So if you need to, you can trim it a little bit around the edges, not too close to the stitching line. But even though the core shifted, the top stitching line is still perfectly aligned. So it's gonna look pretty from the topper side. And now it's time for the backer fabric. So for my backer, I use one mil PUL interlock fabric. The shiny side is the wrong side of the fabric and this polyester knit side is the right side of the fabric. So you place the backer fabric right side facing up and you put the right side of the topper facing down onto the backer fabric. 
And again, make sure that the length of the pad is along the length of the backer fabric. And now I pin all the way around in a counterclockwise direction along the sewing line. Make sure that the backer fabric is laying flat and that there are no puckers or folds. And cut more or less where you cut the topper fabric. Just make sure to leave about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch of excess fabric of the backer, just like we did for the topper. So now we're gonna sew the topper to the backer along this line, but we're gonna need to leave a gap so that we can turn the pad right side out. So you can leave the gap here along the wing or along this longer straight line in the case of this pattern. So I'm gonna mark out where my gap is gonna be. I like to have my gap a little bit away from the corner so I don't start the gap at the corner itself. So we're gonna start stitching here, stitch all the way around, and then stop right here. And we'll have the gap through which we can turn the pad right side out. Make sure to reset your stitch setting to about 2.5 because we set it at three before for top stitching, but we're not top stitching now. So your stitch length should be a bit shorter, whatever the default of your machine is. And as before, you want the needle to stop in the down position. So start sewing at the gap and reinforce your stitching. So I stitch backwards and forwards about twice in order to reinforce this spot, which might be under strain when we turn the pad right side out. Pivot at the corners just like you did before. It's the same thing except we're working with a bit of a shorter stitch length. And just as we did before, lift the presser foot if you need to in order to adjust your fabric so that your needle is following the stitching line. And remember not to rush, go as slow as you need to. And now I'm nearing the point where I need to stop my stitching. So you don't want to sew the gap closed. You want to sew up until this point and then again reinforce your stitching by sewing backwards and forwards about two times. And cut the excess thread. In order for your pad to turn right side out nicely, you need to trim the excess fabric. This pattern has four outer corners at the wings and four outer corners at the front and back. So the way you trim outer corners is by cutting across like this, making sure not to cut your stitching line because that will create a hole. So I leave about a millimeter away from the seam line when I trim. I repeat this for all of the outer corners in the pad. This is why I don't like to start my turning gap at a corner because this lets me have a complete corner that I can trim without the turning gap messing up this corner. And now I'm clipping into all of the inner corners. And by clipping into an inner corner, you're allowing the seam line to hinge at that corner. So it'll turn right side out properly and you won't get any tension in the fabric at these inner corners when the pad is turned right side out. And now for the curves. This pad has only moderate curves, doesn't have any tight curves. So what I would do for moderate curves and also for tight curves is to trim the excess fabric. Now you don't wanna to trim too much because this will weaken your seam. So I leave about three millimeters. It depends on how thick your fabric is. And if it turns out nicely, then you did a good job with your trimming. Some people like to use pinking shears I prefer to use fabric scissors because pinking shears hurt my hand. Now you can do this for moderate curves and you should do this for tight curves. Add little tiny clips into the fabric and that will allow the curve to turn more smoothly. Make sure you're not cutting into your seam line. And now the pad is ready to be turned right side out. So it's much easier to turn a pad right side out when you have a thin core layer and a thin backer layer and a long straight line for your turning gap. And just pull the fabric out like this 
and then grab a blunt pencil or a chapstick or a knitting needle or I'm using the back side of a paintbrush here. Anything that's pointy but not too pointy so that it'll poke through your fabric or make a hole in the fabric. And I use that in order to gently push the corners out so they're nice and crisp. And take your time with this step because it'll affect the finished look of your pad. I'm also running the paintbrush along the seam line in order for the seam line to be completely exposed. I don't want the seam line hiding inside the fabric. And do this for all of the outer corners and all around the seam line until your pad looks good. I also like to pull the seam out by grabbing the topper and backer, pulling it out and then pressing it with my hands. And then once it's pressed in place, I pin it all the way around. I know some people like to press or iron their pad at this point. I don't do that because if the seam isn't properly pulled out, then pressing it in place is not going to help. That's why I prefer to pull it out by hand and then press it by hand and pin it in place. And I pin it in place about where I'm going to sew the top stitching so I'm not creating any unnecessary holes in my backer. Take your time with this step and that way your finished pad will look a lot nicer and it'll be shaped just the way that the pattern is shaped. I like to leave the turning gap for last. I just tuck in the fabric and press it closed with my hands and then pin it in place. And the top stitching will hold it in place. You can also whip stitch it closed by hand, but you don't have to do that. And now we're ready to top stitch all the way around. So you wanna set your stitch length to a bit of a longer length, about the three setting on your machine. And set your presser foot along the edge I choose a guide along my presser foot and I align the edge of the pad with this guide. I'm not looking at the needle as I'm sewing, but rather I'm looking at this point in order to make sure that the fabric is still aligned with this guide on my presser foot. And that way my top stitching is going to come out evenly spaced away from the edge. And you sew all the way around just like you did before, turning the corners and the curves just like you did before. Trim the excess thread from the beginning of the seam line before you get to it. Sew all the way to the beginning of the stitching line and reinforce your stitching by stitching backwards and forward. Trim the excess thread and you're done sewing your pad. So now it's time to attach the snaps. So my patterns have a marking where the snaps need to go. So the way I like to place the snaps in the right place is by folding the pattern along this widthwise center line and aligning the pattern onto the pad and making a mark where the snaps need to be. Poke a hole using an awl through the marks you made and install one snap from the topper side and install the second snap from the backer side. And you're done sewing your pad. You just need to wash your pad and the top stitching marking will come off. I hope you found this video helpful. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or any requests for other videos you're interested in. I have left some useful links in the description below, so check those out as well. And you're welcome to subscribe if you're interested in more videos relating to sewing cloth pads.